pretty cool. And you can join us on Monday for Eclipse Watch, our special coverage of the solar eclipse. It all starts at 10 in the morning, streaming on CBS News Bay Area. Find us on the free CBS News app or on Pluto TV. And Darren Peck is with us now. Looks going to be pretty cool, even if yeah. it's just a partial from here. That's the best way to sum it up is <laughs> with the partial eclipse here is definitely worth checking out here at home. I'm going to show you what our perspective on that's going to look like. And then right after that, I'm going to show you how vastly different it would be from the experience of somebody who's going to be in the path of totality. Okay. Let's go to the imagery. I'll show you the uh, playthrough on that. So this is our view. And of course, you know, you'd have to have your special glasses on to see that the way that will play out. Because if you looked at the sun and it was only getting eclipsed 34 percent, you would do serious damage to your eyes. That's why that's that's it. That's the only amount of the sun that's going to get covered from our vantage point here in the Bay. It's still fascinating. It's still a really enlightening experience, and it's something you should take part in and make plans to do that now to make sure you've got the proper eyewear. That's our day. I want to show you the difference for those who are in that path that's going to go through the midsection of the country. We're going to use Dallas as the example because here's what it's going to look like for them. When you get the complete total solar eclipse, it is a very different experience primarily because for four minutes, the moon blocks the entire sun. And in that four minutes, you are able to see the corona, which is the atmosphere of the sun. The sun itself is so bright, we can't ever see that from Earth. But when you get this perfect alignment where the moon blocks out the sun, but it only blocks the sun perfectly enough so that it outlines it exactly, and then you're able to actually see the corona around the edges of it. That's what makes it such a spectacular experience. Not only that, it gets dark enough, you can see stars and constellations in the middle of the day when this happens. And one of the researchers I was talking to from um, Exploratorium said when he went in 2017, you can actually see solar flares going off the edge of it. Here's the path. You got to be in that 100 mile wide path. That's it. It's only 100 miles wide. And it's going to be a bit cloudy for part of that on and off on Thursday. It's going to be tough to forecast the clouds. They're, they'll be doing that up to the hour, really, from many places in the midsection of the country. Our forecast is easier. There's a little bit of light rain coming in very late tonight and into tomorrow morning. A few light, isolated showers, which will be done before sunrise. So there is no rain in the forecast on Sunday. Although, as we take a look at Sunday in the early afternoon, North Bay Mountains and down along the southern edge of the Diablo Range could see a few afternoon showers develop over the higher elevation. So we can't rule out the possibility for a light shower on Sunday. But there really wouldn't be much at all, should you get any, over your part of the bay. Morning lows tomorrow were still kind of cool. But not as cold as this morning was. We've kind of started the warming trend. Daytime highs today will be in the mid-60s. But look at the comparison from Sunday to Thursday. Huge difference. That's really the headline in the forecast. There's a significant warm-up coming our way. You see it in all the microclimates, San Francisco and Oakland. It's going to be in the mid-70s in San Francisco on Wednesday. Upper 70s in Oakland will be near 80 for the North Bay, we'll be in the low 80s for San Jose by then. And when we take a look at our North Bay valleys and inland valleys for the East Bay, you'll be right around the low 80s as well.